um, to discuss a little bit more the guts of how Jetscape actually works. And so if, if you just want to generate some events uh, and you don't really care about the details of Jetscape, then these parts won't be super important to you, um, although it can be helpful to understand a bit how things work. Um, on the other hand, if you want to, um, if you're thinking about developing some code in Jetscape, so either adding a module or just kind of playing around uh, with things in a custom way, um, this it's important to understand some some basics at least of how the framework is working. Um, so I'll, I'll highlight here kind of um, not the full detail of these things. For the full detail, you can look in this this Jetscape manual in this uh, archive number posted here. Um, but I, I try to highlight what are kind of the key pieces of this. So the, the framework itself, uh, it's a task-based framework um, written in C++. And so what, what this means is that um, there is uh, a set of physics modules. So these are, these are defined in kind of the right side of this, um, this diagram that I show here, different types of physics modules. Um, for different pieces of the the event evolution, and these are these are daughter classes that inherit um, from a a module base class, which inherits from something called Jetscape task, which is kind of the the overall root task of of the framework. And so, when we say task based framework, what we really mean is that um, the framework, uh, so this this Jetscape task essentially will automatically call some standard functions from all of the modules that are defined. So when you define a physics module, um, it, it Im implements only these specific functions that the framework will call. So these are functions like init uh, or exec, which gets executed every event or finish and so on. Um, and so the idea is that the modules can, can uh, kind of interface to the framework in, in a more or less uniform way. And then as a, as a, as a module, you don't have to care about connecting um, or, or running yourself in the framework, but you just need to interface in the, in the appropriate way, implement the appropriate functions, and then the framework will take care of the rest. It will automatically insert that module into the appropriate place um, that is specified uh, and, and take care of all of the uh, steering of those modules to generate your events. Um, so the framework itself, and this is kind of a key point, is that the, the framework explicitly defines the different possible ways that different modules can interact with each other. So this is really, um, this is where some uh, physics choices come in to uh, the framework design, and we try to make this as general as possible, you know, as few assumptions as possible. Um, but for example, the jet energy loss module needs to have access to information from a hydrodynamic module. And so the framework needs to know in some way how to actually connect or interface those, those two different modules together uh, to allow the uh, information flow. So this, this is implemented in Jetscape in um, so-called signal slot uh, paradigm. And this means basically that there are, there are certain parts, uh, there are basically certain places in the code or certain connections um, between specific modules that are allowed and which, um, which expect certain specific information to be present. Um, now we'll, we'll see a little bit more um, detail of this, some examples of this, um, when we go through how to write your own custom module. We'll have some simple examples for that. Um, but this, this table here shows you kind of some, um, shows you the connections between these various um, modules. So for example, the jet energy loss module needs to be connected to the fluid dynamics uh, module and it expects some, some particular um, uh, information to flow from one to the other. Um, so these these diagrams here on this next slide show in a little bit more complete picture an example of how these connections look in Jetscape. Um, so there's two, two diagrams that are shown here. On the left is uh, corresponding to the initialization phase of the framework. And the right is the 
um, execution phase. So the, the event, each event um, things look like uh, on the right. And so in the initialization phase on the left, um, one needs to, init, I mean, the fr what the framework does is it initializes all the modules that have been defined. Um, again, only those ones that you've specified that you've asked to run. Um, and then it creates also these, these connections between the different modules. Um, and so again, these, these show up in, in specific places, um, specific connections motivated by the physics. Um, and then once that initialization phase is complete, um, the execution phase uh, uh, takes over and looks slightly different. Um, mostly it's of course similar that you, know, you start um, from the initial state and you go to hydro and uh, hard scattering and so on. Um, one key difference, especially for those of you interested in, in uh, jet physics, um, is that once you get to the, the jet piece of the event, um, how the framework works is it actually, it takes um, uh, a set or a list of different shower initiating partons. And for each of those, it, it will shower them. Um, and so this is basically uh, done through a graph structure, which will take in say N partons and output M partons from uh, the jet energy loss module. Um, so this is kind of the basics. And, and again, if you're just running Jetscape, you don't need to know all these details, but um, for those of you interested in developing things, this, this is um, important at least to have a basic sense of. Now, there are also a couple of data structures defined in Jetscape um, that you will want to be aware of if you're, if you're adding some custom code to Jetscape. Um, one of these is, is the particles themselves are defined through this base class called Jetscape Particle Base. It's just a very simple class. It it's, um, actually inherits um, in, in particular way from FastJet PseudoJet class. And it just contains kind of the basic um, particle information that, that you would expect, some PID, mass, four vector, as well as a, some a label and status uh, field. And so there, there are a couple of derived classes for this. So there's a hadron class, there's a parton class, um, and there are particular ways if, if you want to, in, uh, in your module to create a new parton, for example, you can have a look um, at, at these you know, specific ways of how to create a, uh, a particle from some, from some simple arguments. Uh, now, in addition to this um, particle-based class, there is as well the parton shower. Um, and so th this is another very important piece, um, especially for the JET folks. Um, so the, the parton shower is, is a class that um, it's stored as, as a graph. So it kind of intuitively makes sense that we have this showering process and it, it uh, can be stored in, it's very natural to store in a graph structure, which is made up of um, some edges and vertices uh, in the typical language. And there is some functionality to, um, to kind of query this, this part on shower object, uh, which can be useful also if you're developing uh, some code. But okay, for these, I wanted to kind of flash these things to give you a sense of what is there for the details. Um, you'll need to look into the manual or, or, or look into the code and take a spin um, on these things yourself. Okay, 